Hello and welcome to this Tuesday devotion of Holy Week. I'm glad that you are here. I'm Reverend Devontae. I'm one of the pastors here at Fifth Avenue Baptist Church and I thank you for joining us today. Today's devotion is called Crucified, Called, and Glorified. And I pulled the passages from our Linton Daily uh, Reading Guide, and you can find that on our website at fifthavenuebaptistchurch.org. Go over and click on Lent 2024. And the passages that I pulled uh, was uh, Isaiah 49, 1 through 7, 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 31, and ending up in John 12, 20 through 36. And my hope is that you would take time to read those on your own. And I'm just going to give a short devotional thought on each and every one of those passages. And then we're just going to pray at the end. Now, today, my hope is that we would understand the profound tapestry of God's redemptive plan as it weaves through the prophecy of Isaiah, the wisdom of Paul in Corinthians, and finally, in the fulfillment of the gospel in John. See, these scriptures invite us into a deep contemplation of our own identity and of our own purpose, and finally, in the paradoxical power found in the humility and the sacrifice and the obedience to God. So today we're going to start out in Isaiah 49, 1 through 7. See, this passage speaks directly to those who may feel hidden, who may feel insignificant, who may feel weary from their labors. The Lord reminds us that you are my servant, as he says in Isaiah 49, 3, you are my servant in whom I will display my splendor. Even when we feel that our efforts are in vain, God assures us that our reward is with him and our work is, isn't going unnoticed. This passage prophetically points to Jesus, the servant who indeed will bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel back to God. It also speaks to us, calling us to trust in God's plan and God's timing. Even when we cannot see the fruits of our labor, God is still at work. And then we transition into 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 31. Paul addresses the Corinthians about the nature of God's wisdom versus human wisdom. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, This passage challenges our worldly understanding of power, of wisdom, and of strength. Paul reminds us that God chose what is foolish and weak and lowly to shame those who believe that they are earthly wise, that they are leaning onto their own understanding, that they are uh, worldly strong. The principle is beautifully illustrated in the life and death of Jesus Christ, who, though being God, humbled himself to the point of death on a cross, confounding all the wisdom of the world with the wisdom of God. Now, in John 12, 20 uh, to 36, this gives us a glimpse into the heart of of Jesus as he faces the culmination of his earthly ministry, in which we will celebrate again um, this Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. Now, when some of the Greeks seek to see Jesus, it signifies to Jesus that the hour has come that the Son of Man will be glorified. Jesus speaks of his own death as a kernel of wheat falling to the ground and dying to produce many seeds. This imagery speaks to the necessity of a sacrifice for the sake of the greater life, of a greater fruitfulness. Jesus declared in his declaration that now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason that I came, John 12, 27 says. And this invites us to embrace our own moments of trial and surrender to God, knowing that God's greatest work is often done through our greatest challenges. So in understanding God's call, God's 
uh, being crucified and then Jesus being glorified, we have to understand that through these passages that God is always at work, even when we feel like our work is in vain and that we cannot lean onto our own understanding that our ways are not God's ways and we need to surrender to the power and wisdom and strength of God. And then to understand that even in our greatest trials and our greatest tribulations, God is at work at um, in us and through us. So today, as we meditate on these passages, we meditate on the divine call of God, the, the paradox of God's power, which is made perfect in our weakness and the glory that comes through surrendering and sacrifice. As Christ followers, we are invited to find our identity, not in just achievement and strength or wisdom, but in our obedience to God's call, our willingness to take up our cross daily and our faith in the power in which Christ brings forth in his life and his death and ultimately in his resurrection. So as we meditate on those today, let me pray for you. Let's pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, we come to you now, Lord, and we thank you for who you are and what you are doing in the lives of those who are listening to this. We ask that you put a special blessing on them, Lord, that you would protect them, put a hedge of protection around them, that you watch their coming and their going, Lord. Lord, we ask that you reveal yourself in a way that is miraculous to those who are listening, that you would give them new life, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in your name that we pray these things. Amen. Thank you all, and I see you all on Resurrection Sunday. God bless.